second earth. Mark had to get out of the bathroom. The little stall was closing in on him. He tried to jump up off the seat, but a loop of his pack was caught on the flush, flusher handle, and all he managed to do was fall back and flush the stupid toilet. He pulled his pack free, jammed the parchment papers into it, then fumbled for the lock to spring himself from the stall. He was so flustered he couldn't even work a simple latch. Finally, mercifully, he slammed it back and threw the door open to see. Standing there was Andy Mitchell. He was leaning casually against the wall, smoking a cigarette. Geez, you been in there a long time, Diamond. Everything could... everything come out all right? Mitchell gave a stupid grin, like that was a truly clever line. Mark froze for a second, feeling as if he had caught doing something wrong. I'm f f fine. When Mark got nervous, he had a little stutter. It wasn't a horrible thing, just something that came out under stress. Mitchell ex expertly flipped his cigarette across the room, and it landed in one of the urinals. Bullseye. Originally, Mark would have been grossed out by that, but his mind was on other things right now. It's cool, said Mitchell. What you do in the privacy of the can is your business. What's in the pack? Mark clutched the pack to his chest, as if it contained precious papers, which in fact it did. His mind raced. What was the one thing he could say that Mitchell could would accept? and not ask more questions. The answer was clear. P Playboys. Mitchell gave a lash of a grin. Lash of a grin. You dog, let me see. He reached for the pack, but Mark yanked it away and back toward the door. This is sorry, I'm late. Before Mitchell could say another word, Mark turned and ran from the room. He didn't know where he was going. But he ran anyway. Anyway, The words from the pages kept running through his head. Could this story be true? This was the kind of stuff you saw in the movies or read in graphic novels. People made this stuff up for entertainment. It wasn't real. He probably would have dismissed the whole thing as a work of fiction, except for the strange visitor he had the night before and the ring on his finger that made these pages appear on the bathroom floor. They were both real as can be. There was no logical explanation for what had happened, so therefore all the normal rules of reality had to be tossed out the window. He needed to talk to Bobby. But if the story were true, Bobby was in indeposed at the moment and not available for questioning. It was 9.30 in the morning. Mark and Bobby should have been in geometry class. Of course, Mark wasn't there because he was too busy running frantically through the empty halls of Stony Brook Junior High like a nut burger. Somehow, geometry didn't seem all that important right now. But he swung by the classroom anyway, praying that he'd find Bobby sitting at his desk. Mark approached the door warily. He took a breath and looked in it to see that Bobby's desk was empty. Not good. Mark didn't know where to turn. He had to talk to somebody, but who? He wanted to share what, he was, what was going on, but more important, he needed confirmation that he wasn't totally out of his mind. That's when the answer came to him. There was one person who could verify part of the story. Courtney Chetwind. The, the gym classes at Stony Brook were normally segregated, boys from girls. The only time the classes were code was for gymnastics, when they had to share the apparatus. The rest of the time, there was a huge collapsible wall drawn between the boys' gym and the girls' gym. However, there was one other exception to the rule. That was Courtney Chetwind. When it came to team sports, Courtney didn't play with the girls. She was tall and strong and the advantage she had over most girls was unfair. So even though it went against every rule of the school system and the country and the state, Courtney was allowed to play with the guys, 
No one complained, either. The girls were just as happy not to have to deal with their whooping up on them all the time. And after she proved herself to the guys, which took all of 30 seconds, they welcomed her. And they didn't cut her any slack, either. In fact, most of the guys feared her. When Courtney played, it was full speed all the way around. And her game was volleyball. Wham! Courtney leaped high over the net and spiked the ball over the head of the poor opponent. The guy was stunned silly, and Courtney landed gracefully before the ball hit the ground. Point break, she said with a smile. Courtney never showed mercy. It was her serve now, and the ball was bounced to her. Come on, let's go! Game point. Courtney had a killer serve. And everyone expected this to be the final nail in the coffin. But as she walked to the service line, something caught her eye. It was Mark Diamond. The little guy was waving at her frantically from outside the gym door. As soon as he got her attention, he started motioning for her to come over. Courtney raised a finger as if to say, wait one minute. But that made Mark wave even harder. He would not be denied. Courtney frowned and tossed the balls to one of the, her teammates. You serve, she said, and headed towards Mark. What? The teammate yelled in shock. It's game point! I know, don't blow it. The guys watched her in wonder for a moment, then turned back to the game with a shrug. Though none of them would admit it, the guys from the other team breathed a little sigh of relief. Courtney headed straight over, the, over for the door and threw it open to find Mark waiting in the empty hall. This better be good, she said impatiently. Mark waffled back and forth nervously, shifting his weight from foot to foot. Courtney watched him for a second and then said, You have to pee? No, 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 I, I, it was Bobby. Courtney's gray's eyes focused. Where is he? Why didn't he come play last night? Mark hesitated as if not wanting to ask the next question. But he did. D -d -d did you guys make out at his house last night? Courtney stared at him, not exactly sure she had heard what she thought she had just heard. Then she blew a gasket. That's what you got me over here for? He missed the biggest game for the year. And wait a minute. Did Bobby tell you about us? I'll kill him. Courtney, wait, it's not like that. Mark tried to stop her angry tirade, but Courtney was on a roll. I didn't care who he is. I don't care who he is. He can't go around telling private stuff like that. Stop, shouted Mark. Courtney did, mostly because she was so surprised Mark had made such a bold move. That wasn't like him. They both looked at each other, not sure of where to go next. Mark now had her attention, and it was up to him to make the next move. When he spoke, it was slow and thoughtful. He didn't want to stutter, and he didn't want to make a mistake. So he pushed his glasses back up on his nose and said, I think something strange happened to Bobby. What went on between you guys last night? Was it part of it? I, I'm sorry if it upsets you, but I've got to know. Did you two make out at his house last night? Courtney tried to read Mark. He was a shy guy, and the fact that he had take, he'd asked a personal question like this was hugely out of character. Clearly, there was more going on here than guys bragging to each other about getting to first base with, with a girl. She could see it in his eyes. Mark was scared. Yeah, she said. We did. Where is he? I don't know, he said downcast. I hope he's at his house. Will you come with me and talk to him? The two held eye contact for a long time. Courtney was trying to read Mark's thoughts, and Mark was praying that Courtney would come with him so he could share some of the burden of what he knew. Maybe she could even help him figure things out. Courtney walked past Mark and gave him a simple, quick, Let's go. Courtney was now on a mission. She wanted to talk to Bobby. If she had to go to his house to find him, so be it. Mark was relieved that he now had an ally, but he had no idea how to tell Courtney what he knew next.
what he knew. For if she had believed him, for now though, he was happy just to have someone to talk to. The Pendragons lived on a quiet, cool dick sock, not far from school. It was lunchtime, so Courtney and Mark figured they could reach Bobby's house, get to the bottom of what was going on, and be back at school before anyone missed them. As they hurried up the sidewalk, Mark had to wave quickly to Mark had to walk quickly to keep up with Courtney's long, purposeful strides. He wanted to tell her about the visitors he had the night before, and the ring, and the parchment with Bobby's story, but he was afraid she'd dismiss him as a mental case. He had to choose his words carefully. Do you know what do you know Bobby's Uncle Press? he asked cautiously. Yeah. And uh did he see did you see him last night? Unfortunately, he's the guy who caught us making out. Mark's heart sank. Not that it mattered if Bobby and Courtney made out, or that they were caught by Bobby's uncle. The problem was, Courtney's answer conform confirmed more of the story's con story contained on the parchment papers. Mark feared that if some of the story were true, then maybe all of it was true. The thought made him sick. They were nearly at Bobby's house now. Mark hoped that Bobby would be there to settle everything. He imagined walking up to Bobby, holding out the parchment paper, and seeing Bobby burst out laughing. Bobby would say it was all good, all a goof, and that he never expected them to think it was real. It was a prank, like Orson Welles, War of the Worlds radio broadcast that made everybody think that Earth was being inva invaded by Martins. That's what Mark was hoping for. But what they both saw in the next instant dashed the hope entirely. To Linden Place. That was the address Mark had been there a thousand times ever since kindergarten. They'd trade off playing at each other's house. Bobby's house was like his second home. Miss Pendragon called Mark her second son. That's why nothing could prepare him for what he was about to see. Courtney and Mark walked up the sidewalk that led to the split rail fence that surrounded Bobby's front yard and stopped cold. They bo both looked at two linen place, stunned. Oh my god, was all Courtney could whisper. Mark couldn't even get that much out. Two linen place was gone. The two of them stood there, wide-eyed, looking at a vacant lot. There was no sign that a house had ever been there. Not a single piece of wood, brick, stone, or blade of grass existed in that in the space. The ground was nothing but dirt. Mark looked to the huge maple tree, where years before Mr. Pendragon had hung a tire swing for the boys. The tree was there, but there was no swing. Even the branch that had been rope scarred by years of swinging was clean. No marks. Nothing. Courtney broke first. It's the wrong address, Mark said softly. It's not the wrong address. Courtney wouldn't accept it. She stormed onto the empty lot. But I was here last night. There was a sidewalk to the house right here, and the front door was there, and Bobby and I were standing. Her voice trailed off. She looked to Mark with dread. Mark, what happened? Now was as good a time as any, even though he had no idea what had happened. Seeing the empty lot confirmed his worst fears. Everything he had read on the pages from Bobby was true. He had more questions than he had answers, but he did have some answers. As strange as they were, he wanted to share them with Courtney. Knowing all this by himself was too tough, so he reached for his backpack and took out the yellow parchment papers. I want you to read something, he said. It's from Bobby. He held out the pages to Courtney, He lo who looked at them, then back to Mark. Reluctantly, she took the pages from him and sat down, right there, right in the middle of the empty lot of two linen place, not far from the spot where she and Bobby shared their first kiss. She looked down at the pages and started to read.